Today's mini lecture is on Sandell's fourth chapter, Markets and Morals. And today I'm coming to you live from the Deaton family living room, along with my big orange buddy, Justin Gordon. And together we're watching the UT South Carolina game. And oh, you almost got that. Oh, almost had a touchdown. Actually, it was pretty slow up until right now. I thought, hey, I can work in a lecture, but uh, hopefully it'll remain slow. I may be distracted. Chapter's broken down according to two different issues, military service and mur uh, surrogate mothering. And military service can be incentivized in at least three different ways. First, we can force people to serve according to a draft. Second, we can force people to serve according to a random draft, but allow them to pay replacements. And third, we can have just an all-volunteer army, which is what we have right now. The benefit of the first, uh, conscription or just an all-draft uh, army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, etc., is that if all citizens were expected to serve in the military, our foreign policy would probably be much more careful because then everyone would be vul vulnerable to serve into the dangers of war, so too would their sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and cousins and family and friends, etc., uh, that's that's one benefit. Uh, one drawback of having conscription or a draft, the ability to pay a replacement, is that although it enables people to make that free choice to spend their money in that way if they want to and for volunteers to step up and make that agreement if they like, it seems to be slightly unfair, or perhaps greatly unfair, to those who couldn't afford an a replacement. And so those citizens who happen to have uh, quite a bit of money would be able to excuse themselves from military service and the dangers uh, that are inherent thereof and those who could not afford it would not be able to. And so this would seem to undermine social solidarity, whereas the first, the draft for all, would seem to strengthen civic friendship. The last option, having an all-volunteer army, is what we have now, and polls consistently show that that's what Americans prefer. The question, though, is that is, is that system unfair in a similar way to the unfairness and the divisiveness of having a draft which you can pay a replacement? And the worry is that the attractiveness of military service service goes up according to the uh, amount that, of wealth that you don't have and uh, to the amount of opportunities that you don't have. And so the worse off you are, the more likely you are to serve. And so the people who choose to serve, their choice may not be as free as uh, it would be if, if conditions were more equal. That's the criticism anyway. As I think I've mentioned before, I'm an Air Force veteran, and I joined the Air Force shortly after high school for several different reasons, but one of the reasons was the promise of education after uh, military service. At the time, I didn't have any way to pay for college. There wasn't a Hope Scholarship in Tennessee at the time. Um, I wasn't familiar with the ability to uh, take out student loans. I certainly couldn't afford to pay for college directly, and neither could my family. And so that was uh, one incentive. Another was just good old-fashioned patriotism, wanted to serve my country and do my part to protect it. Uh, another was family tradition. My grandfather and my father, they both served my uncle, uncles, served in various conflicts and such, and I assume that tradition goes back even further into our, our lineage. Um, lots of reasons, but one of the reasons was financial. And so the worry is that that choice isn't quite as voluntary for people in dire straits. Um, the question is, what should we think about military service in light of libertarianism? What should we think about military, military service in light of our considered convictions in general? Should we change the way that we recruit troops should we try to adjust the conditions in the society such that people have more of an equal chance to succeed in this world and so that they're not as, in some cases, desperate to join the military? What can we do about that? That's a general question I'd like for you to think about for this class. Second issue we discuss, or Sandell discuss, is surrogate mothering. And surrogate mothering occurs when a woman who is not the intended woman to raise the child carries a unborn developing human full term. And so in the past, we would have artificial insemination. We would take the male's seed and we would inject it into the woman and it would of course join with her egg and that would produce a fetus or an unborn developing human and it would come full term and then at the end of the term the woman would give up parental rights to that child in exchange <coughs> for some previously, excuse you, or bless you, uh, some previously agreed to amount. And so this was a service provided. This was something that uh, families who were couples who were in, infertile when the, the woman in the couple was unfer, infertile, they could use this as a way to bring about a child that was at least biologically connected to the father. Now there's something else called full surrogacy in which, or I think Sando calls it new surrogacy, in which in vitro fertilization has enabled doctors to join the egg and the sperm of both intended parents that intended to, to uh, raise the child, join those outside of the womb, and then uh, implant that within a uh, a surrogate mother who will carry the unborn developing human full term and at the end of the pregnancy turn over the child 
to those parents, um, absolve herself of all uh, responsibility and abdicate all parental rights. Um, in, in many cases, uh, in exchange for monetary compensation. The criticism of partial surrogacy, the first form, is that it uh, equates to selling children because the woman uh, contributes an egg to this. She's not just a womb for hire. She's not just renting her body. She's actually selling her egg. And uh, if we think it's improper or immoral to sell children, that's one reason to criticize that practice. And the second example where the uh, surrogate mother's genes are not involved whatsoever, it's not her egg, the criticism is that the practice, and this would be true of the first uh, form of, of surrogate mothering as well, the practice degrades mothering uh, by monetizing the practice of carrying a UDH full term, this devalues it. It puts a price on something that should be beyond price, and that's motherly love and care. And so this not only harms the woman who engages in this practice, but it harms all women uh, in that it devalues their status as potential mothers and as actual mothers. Second question for you then, do you think that's actually the case? Do you think that surrogate mothering, either partial or full surrogate mothering, degrades women? Does it degrade mothering? Is that a practice that should not be available for uh, monetary exchange? Should that be something that, that should be only exercised in cases of uh, voluntary exchange? For example, there was a time when my wife and I thought that we may, may have trouble uh, uh, with her carrying a child full term. It turns out she doesn't have any trouble at all. But at a time we worried about that, and my sister actually said, hey guys, if, if you can't carry full term, um, you can, can join the egg and the sperm externally, no weird incestuous stuff here. But you can conjoin the egg and the sperm externally, and I'd be happy to carry full term. We never had to take her up on that, thank goodness. But that's something that would have been done out of the goodness of her heart, not because she expected or we offered any monetary compensation. And we might distinguish that from surrogacy uh, contracts that are carried out in the market for money. Okay, so those are your two issues to think about. Uh, military service, conscription versus conscription with the ability to pay a replacement versus volunteer army. Are those three options really all that different? Um, and also surrogate mothering. Does it really uh, devalue the status of mothering? And is it something that we should prohibit for those reasons? Thanks for your attention as always. And go balls. Say go balls. Go balls.